Hey, it's Francis. And today I've got an exciting video. Um, I'm going to be doing a collaboration and the collaboration is going to be a, a crypt hop track. So, um, sort of an extremely obscure genre. If you think dungeon synth is obscure, it's basically a combination of that with hip hop. So, um, I'm not sure if people will be happy or angry that I'm legitimizing that genre with this video, but, uh, I guess we'll see what happens. And, um, I'm going to do this as a collab, so I'm not actually um, making the whole track by myself. I got some stems from an artist called Mugdrude, and I'm not sure what to expect. I actually haven't listened to them yet, so I am going to, um, well, you'll get my reaction, put it that way. Uh, let's bring them into Reaper, see what happens. So they are organized pretty well. get rid of that. And um, there's a README, which is going to tell me, um, hopefully, everything I need to know to work with this. In this case, um, 140 BPM. So let's set that. Already panned, mixed to original levels uh, with effects. So effects are baked in and then stemmed. So these are stems, the separated tracks. And um, Adjust mix as desired. So that's basically just telling me to do what I need to do. Um, and I guess the starting point would be to uh, listen to some of this, get a feel for what it sounds like. Um, I always just sort of assume that stuff's going to come in a little bit loud. So I'm going to pull down all of my faders by the same amount here. Okay. Also going to do some organizing as I listen to it. Rumble and wind sound like they are going to fall into the sound effect category. It's a percussion. Okay, nice. I'm going to consider this crumble to be part of uh, the choir section. Get rid of that one? Well, I'll check it first. Oh, there's something in here. Glad I didn't delete it. <laughs> it's just a very, very quiet sound effect. Okay, neat. So, the cool thing here is that I think, uh, well, I am going to be able to leave this stuff more or less as it is and just bring in some some beat stuff. And uh, to do that, I'm gonna want specifically a kick, a snare, and hats. Um, there's a lot of ways of doing a, a hip hop track, a lot of ways of doing a hip hop beat. I wouldn't really consider myself to be a hip hop producer, so I don't wanna pretend like I'm an authority on that. But the things that really seem to help are um, kicks, snares, claps, um, hi-hats, and sometimes like a drum loop, um, if I was sampling a record or something like that. I actually have some records I've been meaning to sample, but um, I don't have anything set up to do that with right now. So that'll have to wait for a future video. Um, let's start by calling it kick, snare, hats. Um, now I could do this with a sampler or with audio. And I'm going to bring in, um, I, I prepped this session a little bit, so I, I picked out some samples that I liked. These are the samples from Mars uh, MPC-808 samples. Pretty cool samples. Um, I can't decide I'm being indecisive. Um, 
So I'm gonna have uh, just, I'm gonna just draw in a beat right over here. Um, and let's do it. I'm just gonna do it with uh, dragging the samples in. Hmm. That's a cool one. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty hard. Let's see if I can find a snare or a clap. That's cool. Let's try this one. Which one do I like more? Maybe I could switch off. And I think I'm gonna want more of these tracks. Um, All right. Um, nice F. Hmm. I'll set my grid to eighth notes. Okay. This is becoming clear to me that since these are so long, I'm going to want to trigger them with a sampler that replaces the sound when um, the second sample enters. And um, I was kind of hoping that I would have an excuse to not be lazy and to do it this way. That way I could show you how that would be done. So uh, in this case, I'm just going to use resample, resample-matic 5000, I guess it's called. Um, and I'm using this because it's the, the one that comes for free with Reaper. Um, and with this, we can just import from a range, and that's going to import this sound. And um, I'm just going to delete that now. Um, and I can do this on a um, on a MIDI track now. And I want to do a few things to set up. First of all, I want my max voices to be one because I want this sample to replace itself every time. Um, I want to um, let the sample play out, so I'm not going to obey note offs. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a release time, just a very short amount. Um, and I'm going to see if it works like this without any changes to the envelope. Pretty cool. Um, and I'm going to ditch this one for now, too. Okay. Um, hats. We're going to do our hats on a sampler as well. And uh, I'll show you another way to bring a sample in. Um, this one's cooler. You can just drag it from your Media Explorer, which, by the way, you can find in your view menu right here. And again, I want max voices to be one. Um, and I'm not going to adjust the um, the envelope at all, because I think this sounds pretty good as it is. And let's give it Eighth notes to start out with. See if eighth notes sound good. Pretty cool. Um, um, sometimes it can sound cool to leave out your beats where you have your snares. 
I'm not going to do that right now, though, because I like this uh, hi-hat sound quite a bit. Um, let's loop that. Yeah, that's good enough for me for now. Neat. Okay. Um, now I just need to set the levels as they relate to each other. Neat. Okay, this track, uh, this is one of the highest compliments in, uh, in genre, I think. This track reminds me of um, Diablo. The, the, the original one, the original on computer or the PlayStation port. I loved the PlayStation port of that game. Local two-player, multiplayer. Um, I know it wasn't popular, but that was like that was my jam. PlayStation 1 Diablo. Um, but this, uh, this whole vibe. Yeah, <laughs> it's got big Diablo energy. Um, neat. So I'm going to start out by looping this concept. And we're going to see if this feels good as a loop. I'm going to give it a little bit of a change here. Back. I'm just gonna do this, sketch this out right now. We're gonna go really, really fast with broad strokes. Here, I want to bring in this again. Maybe not that one. I kind of want this to have to be more of a vibe. Um, I'm going to give it some mid range here. Um, let's do that with uh, a lot of uh, DAWs have a Poltec clone, and this is like the mega ultimate super tool for I think every genre. It's especially popular in hip hop, but we're going to find a frequency range that this really just. Maybe a transient shaper. Um, and you know what? I want the low end to be occupied more by my kick. So I'm going to filter out um, with a standard EQ, I'm going to filter out everything below 250 or so. working pretty good. We're going to put these drums on a bus. 
And in that bus, um, let's actually grab all that stuff and color code it together. We're going to call this a drum bus. I'm using a folder track for that. We're going to do another pull tech. Um, and this is just like, listen to what this does <laughs> with a subwoofer or big headphones. It's subtle, but um, it's it's sort of making everything vibrate a little bit more. It's making it, um, uh, it has a, sort of a pump to it. And uh, you know, sometimes this works really well on the on the master bus. So let's just see what that feels like if I like that more. Um, we have 20 and we're boosting and attenuating. Um, the reason for that is because this is an analog modeled plugin that will, um, uh, react like the hardware unit that it's modeled after. Uh, and this particular unit, the Poltec uh, EQ, uh, doesn't boost and attenuate the same way. So by boosting and attenuating, you're going to create um, uh, a very interesting uh, image. working out pretty good. I'm not going to use it on the drum bus. I'm just going to leave it on the master. Uh, these drums also need to be turned down a bit. And um, I really love this plugin. Um, this is a um, sort of another analog modeled thing, modeled after the uh, Abbey Road mastering chain. And you can do all kinds of magic with this, but um, there's so many good presets in it. And these are phenomenal starting points. Never be embarrassed about using presets. Um, there's a specific one that's a really good drum bus. Um, um, if I used it more often, I would know where it is. Mastering, make it pop, shorty guitar. Mixer drum bus, let's start there. Try to gain stage that out. I'm gonna to try to make the uh, output volume of this match the, the bypass volume. Neat, okay. So I wanna see what this feels like on the way in. Ooh, 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 that's a great intro. That's a vibe. Ooh. I'm gonna have this uh, drop before the um, the whole beat comes. And um, let's do a kind of a filter sweep here. Um, I love the SEM filter uh, from Arturia. This is another one of my favorite plugins. Um, it's a um, model of the, the synth expander module from Oberheim and it's uh, just a phenomenal filter. I'm gonna use a uh, relatively resonant um, low pass filter and I'm gonna just sweep it in. 
I'm gonna tune it first. Something like that. And then I want to um, I want to automate that. So here we are at the cutoff of the filter. And uh, what we wanna do here is to bring that in in that last measure. I kinda wanna just barely sweep it in. Let's see how that feels. And I want this to not be resonant anymore after it after it comes in. So I want to kill this resonance on the way out too. Um, I guess I'll just do another automation line for that. And I'm using show last touch parameters here. Um, so you can imagine what that's doing and why it's making it so easy to find stuff. Same deal here. I'm gonna just do a series of drops, I think. Um, bring this back um, on the grid. And I wanna have this uh, resonant again, and the resonance to be sort of gone again over here. Um, and I'm just doing this sort of eyeballing it. I'll tune it by ear later if I have to. Cool. Sounds pretty neat. Um, God, that kick really needs more mids. Um, it needs another kick supporting it is what it needs also. You know what I could do? I actually think I want just the same, uh, the same sequence being supported with another kick. So I'm going to use another instance of resample and I'm going to find another kick sample, uh, to bring in and share that space. Um, let's go up to, you know what? Um, a kick that would work really well in this track is a Lin drum kick. I have those somewhere. Let's just see if I can dig one up really fast. Um, a nice down tune Lin drum kick would be good. Something like that. Let's see how that feels. I just got to blend them, huh? I want more of this um, kalimba too. Um, I think I want this uh, choir on a bus here. Let's uh, let's get all this stuff in here. Um, uh, pad bus, and I'm gonna hit that with some broad strokes here. Let's give this some more uh, some more presence in the bits. Sounds pretty good. 
Um, uh, right over here. Right here, I think I want to um, get rid of the hats for a little bit, maybe. You know what we could do is we could actually just filter the hats out on the way into this. Let's see how this feels. I kind of like the idea of just muting them. Less kicks too. That's pretty good. in right there um, hitting this with a mute again just kill that one maybe actually um, this will be ugh, where am I here that could be the spot where I do some more of this filter magic Then I'll uh, we'll go a little bit harder with the drum beat here at the end. Cool, that's pretty sick. Um, let's just loop that one and see if it feels good. Continuing the kick and snare pattern, I think, might be a good move. Uh, let's do it like this. Um, but I'm going to remove the hi-hats here. Something a little bit more like that, maybe. Um, Let's see how it feels. That feels good as an outro, huh? Yeah, it feels great. Um, some stuff I want to do here. Um, I want to keep this with sort of a lo-fi vibe. Uh, a couple of things we can do to recreate that would be, first of all, um, I want to sort of put all this together and uh, I'm going to glue it. That's going to put it all on its own tracks. Um, the kick and the hats, um, these are gonna get uh, humanized. Uh, and I'll show you what that's doing here. You can kind of see it if we zoom in. We can sort of pick a random seed and they're gonna bounce off the bee a little bit. So you get a little bit more of an unquantized feel. Uh, let's do that to the kicks as well. I don't wanna go too overboard with this, but I'll probably be good. And I'm using the H key for that. Gives it kind of a drunken vibe. That's too much. 
I'm going to do that again, but on a much lower level. Let's go to only 10% humanization, 9%, sure. And I'm going to do the same amount on this. Um, and that'll give it that drunken vibe, hopefully, without being too far off. Let's see how this feels filtered. I like that. It's going to give it more of a lo-fi vibe. Um, I think that's going to sound good in this genre. Uh, one last touch I want to do is I want to give um, some of this stuff a little bit of... Um, a little bit of reverb, uh, especially these hi hats. Um, let's go ahead and, and hey, you showing up? There it is. I'm gonna use it. This is my favorite dungeon verb. <laughs> sort of a cheap sounding reverb. Um, that snare feels pretty good dry, actually, I think. Um, let's try it with the reverb just in case. I'll use the same one. Oh. Give this a little bit of a fade out on this filter. Again, I think this is just gonna sound a little bit better like that. Maybe not so extreme on this one. Uh, there we go. Um, and I'm going to go harder with the hats on this section, I think, um, just on that first little entrance. Oh, that's the wrong spot. Whoops. What did I do? Um, I want it to be right there. That's the spot where I wanted that. So a couple more hats. Cool. Nice. Um, and I think that if I spent some more time with this, I would go in and uh, do a little bit more fine detail work on these hi-hats and uh, maybe even give it, um, I'm clipping a little bit there, aren't I? Um, maybe even give it a little bit of a, um, like add some effects, add some risers going into, uh, into changes, make some of these like drops feel a little bit more like drops. Um, maybe even do some effects on the pads, but overall, um, for a, for a really short amount of time, I've been working on this. I'm pretty happy with it. And, um, I think that, uh, I might do another one of these. I actually received two tracks from Mugdrude and I'll link to, um, some of the released music from that artist in the description of this video, if you want to check some of it out. Um, and you know what? I might I might do another one of these, uh, especially if you all like this. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, if you had fun watching this, if this is something that's to your interest. If you wanted to uh, sing or rap over this track, I'd be happy to provide it for you. Um, just let me know. Thanks for watching. You know what? Thanks for watching. See you next time.